How are you guys? Good? Uh, well, yeah, obviously pleased to be here. Uh, yeah, Western Province is one of the oldest and most prestigious unions in the world, so to have the honour to coach the Stormers is, is fantastic. Yeah, uh, Kurt's been kind enough to give me the opportunity to coach the Stormers. Yeah, it's a very young squad, uh, but full of potential, and we hope to play some good rugby in the next couple of years. So happy to answer any questions that you have. I've watched a bit of Curry Cup, you know, I've probably watched six or seven games and over the last three days I've been meeting with all the assistant coaches and going through everything. Yesterday we spent the whole day you know, talking about how we want to approach the year. Uh, we went through the list of potential training squad members, so you know, I haven't got the full knowledge of the squad but I've got a, a working knowledge of the squad at the moment. Well, yeah, I'm new in the job but uh, to me, and you go back and you look at the history of Western Province rugby. Yeah, Western Province has been about attacking rugby. And so how we want to mould the team going forward, we want to have the traditional South African base, which is set piece, defence, you know, tough, uncompromising rugby. And that's for every team in the world. But then we want to add that Western Province flavour. Yeah, we want to be a good attacking team. You know, and yeah, if I've got any sort of history as a coach, it's generally been producing attacking rugby teams. So, yeah, attack's hard to, hard to do because it takes longer to produce because it involves the ball, but that's where we want to go. You know, we want to be a side that comes, comes to Newlands and that people get excited by the sort of rugby we play. Now, that's going to take time, but that's, how, that's the direction we want to go. Uh, look, yeah, it's a fantastic city, isn't it? And, you know... As I said, Western Province is, is one of the most prestigious unions in the world. It's a great union, 125 years of history at this ground. Uh, yeah, and the opportunity to catch the Stormers, you know, given that they have the greatest fan base in, in Super Rugby, you know, diverse fan base, fans that are excited to see the team play, and a side that's never won the trophy. And obviously, you know, the ultimate aim always is to produce a good rugby team that then wins trophies. But you've got to produce a good rugby team first. Well, lucky I've got Gert here. Uh, he's going to help me a lot. But, you know, transformation is part of South African society. So, and Western Province has a history of embracing it. So I just see it as a normal part of what we're going to do. We haven't got too many uh, blokes with a scarcity of hair. You know, it's a very young squad. You know, Skulk's the only one that's short of the hair. Uh, and he's just shaving it all off, so he looks a bit like me now. Uh, no, look, you know, I, I see it as a squad that's very young. Um, we're going to have to develop the players slowly. Um, you know, if you look across the squad, we've got good front rowers. You know, we've got the tight head prop, Franz, did exceptionally well at the World Cup. You know, so there's a base of a good scrum. Got uh, Etzebeth and Detroit in the second row, so you've got the base a good line out. You know, back row has got Skulk and Khaleesi and Carr. So there's Elstad, you know, there's good depth there. Um, and the backs are exciting. You know, and the depth of the backs coming through is ex exceptional. So we've just got to get them to understand how we want to play. Well, I think it just helps with your general understanding of, the, of how the game's played here and the understanding of how South Africans think about rugby. You know, I'm not South African, so that, I don't pretend to understand how South Africans play rugby 100%, but I've got a working, working knowledge of it. You know, and obviously I've come to the job to produce some new ideas. And, you know, we don't want the, the Stormers playing like the Brumbies. We don't want the Stormers playing like Japan. We want the Stormers playing like the Stormers. So we want to make sure we keep our base, the base of South African rugby, and then, as I said, add that Western Province flavour to it. Uh, well, the new format, again, I only worry about controlling the things I can control. I don't control the format. So I look at the draw. We've got a good draw, you know. Um, playing the Australian teams, if we play well, it's going to be advantage. If we don't play well, it's going to be a disadvantage, you yeah. know. I think everyone in Super Rugby understands how each other plays. There's no great secrets out there. So, you know, we've just got to get out there and do the basics of the game. Well, if we do that and then add, add what we talked about before, our attacking game, then we're going to have a good season. 
I think it's an exciting time for, for the Stormers in that you've got this bunch of young guys that can now develop a new leadership group. You know, and leadership groups take time to develop. Sometimes it can be six months, sometimes it takes you six years. Let's hope it's not six years. So we've just got to find the right group of players. I've got to talk to the assistant coaches, Flicky and, and Russell and, and, and Flock and, uh, and Paul, and we'll work out who, who the best captain is who the guys who can support him. And if that, you know, that might take us until the end of the pre-season. I'm not sure. You know, I don't have a set timetable. I've just got to start working with the team and work out then how we can take them forward. We'll start, well, we have medicals on Monday and Tuesday. Then Wednesday we'll start, start you know, trying to put together how we want to play. And we're going to do the pre-season probably a little bit differently than it's been done. It won't be a traditional pre-season. We'll be doing strength and conditioning and skills all together again, trying to develop the game we want to play. I think it's just about having that clarity of how we want to play. You know, what I've spoken about before, we want to have a real Stormer style of rugby. You know, that's distinctive from everyone else. You know, and that's what we've got to develop. And the guys know their roles, they know the skill they've got to have, they know the fitness they've got to have. And to play the game successfully, they've got to have all of those qualities. And that's what we want to come up with, a really distinctive Stormers brand of rugby. Yeah, and we want to light up Newlands. Yeah, the, aim, the aim is obviously always to win a trophy, but what we want to do is play rugby there that people at the end of the game, they just can't wait to get their ticket for the next week. Yeah, that's, what we, that's our aim. It varies from team to team. You know, sometimes it can take you six weeks to change a team. You know, I remember running into Bob Dwyer at the World Cup who coached Australia the 91 World Cup. He reckons he could change a team in a week. I'm probably not that confident. But you can change, sometimes you can change teams quickly. Yeah, and if you get a good result early, then the confidence grows. If you don't get a good result early, then it takes you a little bit longer. So, you know, there's some things you can control and some things you can't control. But by the end of next season, you know, we should be playing this, the rugby we want to play. You know, I remember at the Brumbies, it took us three years to get to play the level of rugby we wanted to play. Hopefully it's not going to take that long here, otherwise I mightn't be here. We've got to be able to play with tempo. Yeah, we've got to be able to... When we've got the ball, we've got to keep the opposition on the back foot. And to do that, we've got to have repeat efforts. You've got to get off the ground quickly. Now, if you look at the World Cup, the difference between the Northern Hemisphere countries and Southern Hemisphere countries, you know, skill was one factor, but the other big factor was the ability to get back in the game. You know, the massive difference between the Southern Hemisphere countries and, and the Northern Hemisphere countries. And then if you look at Super Rugby, you know, South Africa's probably trails New Zealand and Australia in that, in that area, and that's one thing we're going to be working on, getting the blokes back in the game quickly. So when we've got the ball, we've got numbers on our feet. When they've got the ball, we've got numbers on our feet. You know, that's what the game's about, getting numbers on your feet, and then you've got options. We've had the Curry Cup coaches in with us the last few days. You know, we're going to have, I think, a coaches forum next week for all the coaches in the province, and, you know, that's part of the role. Yeah, and they don't have to absolutely 100% agree in the way we're going to play, but we want them to understand the way we want to play because it's their, their job to produce the players with the skills. You know, it's all about having skill. If you want to play attacking rugby, you've got to have skill. You've got to have to catch and pass at pace and consistently make good decisions. And that's why we want to develop players like that in Western Province. I've worked with the coaching staff over the last couple of days and uh, my first impressions are very positive. You know, they're all very hard working, very engaging, you know, want to, want to make a new start at the Stormers. And, and that's not to say what's happened in the past has been bad at all. But like any organisation, you, know, you go through a group of players, those, those top players leave, they move to other teams or they retire, and then you've got a new chance a chance to start something new, and that's where we are at the moment. And, and all the staff are, seem very engaged to doing it, so at the moment I'm happy to work with the staff. Yeah, as I, I said the other day, uh, I met those two blokes on Monday, you know, and the two of them together were bigger than the whole Japan team. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're big, physical, athletic guys. You know, they've obviously got their best rugby ahead of them. You know, there's areas of their game they both can work on and both improve on. Yeah, you know, it'll be a little bit hard with uh, Evan because he's going to be in Japan. Uh, but certainly uh, with Peter, we can work on his skill level 
and improve your skill level. But it's exciting, isn't it, to have two locks like that? Now, in a traditional left-hand side lock and a, a jumping right-hand side lock. He's not going to a strong team in Japan. Yeah, not a strong team at all, so he's going to be doing plenty of tackling. Um, I think he's back at the end of January, so hopefully we'll have him for the first game. Yeah, it's, but it's the reality of modern-day rugby now, isn't it? You know, players go and play seasons on seasons, so again, you've just got to cope with it. We've got to make sure that we keep uh, close tracks on what they're doing strength and conditioning-wise and, and make sure they come back in as best condition. And if you look at some players who have done it, it's definitely had you know, a great effect on their careers. You know, Farid Dupree is a good example. You know, Skull came back after Japan in very fit and played some great rugby at the World Cup. So, you know, as long as they, they see the positive parts of it and look to see where they can improve their game, they'll get a good result out of it. Well, if you look at rugby now, you know, the people who touch the ball the most are the nines and tens. So it's about having nines and tens who can make good decisions decisions, can execute skill consistently over 80 minutes. So they're the key positions going forward. Yeah, well, obviously you don't get that consistency in personnel, but I think the other thing you want to do, you know, as a, as a team, we want to be a special team. You want guys to want to play for this team, yeah, and that's what we want to create at the Stormers, guys who want to play at this team. So they might get offered X amount of dollars to play in Europe, but because they're enjoying their rugby so much at the Stormers that they want to stay and play. You know, and if we can do that, then, then that factor's always still going to be there, but we can lessen that factor. And they're obviously young guys, uh, but again, we're just going to have to work with them. Um, you, know, and you, you saw someone like Dan Carter. You know, Carter probably played his best rugby, like his most consistent test rugby from 28 to 33. You know, when he's, he's been through, he's learned all the mistakes. And it takes young standoffs a lot of time to develop. So, you know, we're looking at 20, 21-year-old, 22-year-old guys. So they're going to go through some pain. And we have to accept that they're going to go through some pain. But we've got to allow them to go through that pain and then they'll be very good players. Now, there's no shortcut to developing good nines and tens.